Welcome back. We will now proceed to the fifth session of this conference, which will discuss on the future of FOSS. It is now my privilege to introduce you all to Professor Wolfgang Finke, who studies in business administration and business information systems at the University of Göttingen. He has obtained his PhD in the field of business information systems at the University of Paderborn, Germany. With all his achievements and glory, I would like to invite, invite upon stage Dr. Wolfgang to shed some light on the topic National FOSS Strategy and the Supporting Role of Research Institutions. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me uh, to this uh, nice place and this nice conference. Uh, thank you very much. Um, probably at first I should uh, outline a little bit more about my uh, personal background. Uh, I think uh, some people could claim that I don't know uh, really in depth uh, uh, every field where I have worked, but at least I have worked in uh, pretty different fields. I've got a PhD in uh, business information systems. And uh, then I went to Canada, to the University of Alberta, to become a professor in computer science. After that, I was working in the, at the University of Constance in the uh, information uh, science field. And after that, I got uh, fed up with the uh, university environment a little bit and became an information systems manager at a large business, which was Dornier Corporation. They were manufacturing airplanes, uh, military equipment, communication satellites. And uh, from there, I moved to Daimler-Benz Group and was the personal assistant of uh, several high-level Daimler-Benz uh, managers. And after that, I went to the uh, IT consulting business. So um, I do not have experience, not only experience in uh, science, but I have uh, worked for quite a number of years as an IT manager in large international businesses as well. Uh, so I feel I can, uh, I can uh, make a good evaluation uh, about uh, uh, free and open source software uh, from a management perspective and from the perspective of uh, science as well. So uh, what should we discuss? At first, uh, I would like to outline a little bit uh, what I think what the reason is for all the buzz we have at present about uh, free and open source software. And um, then we should go on to discuss uh, about the role a free and open source software can play. Uh, and I feel um, that I'm not completely convinced about this 100% community approach. Uh, with regard to businesses, we just need a little bit more. We cannot rely on uh, open source communities only. If we really want to make uh, uh, open, open source systems uh, part of the infrastructure in government and in businesses, there must be some management perspectives as, as well. So then uh, we should uh, cover the advantages of utilizing FOSS from a national, a, na a national perspective, I think there are uh, quite significant advantages which more or less, at least from my point of view, uh, force governments to switch to uh, open source or free and open source systems, for sure. Then we need to discuss some roadblocks. I feel we, there must be some policies in place, otherwise um, introducing a free and open source software on a larger national level will not work. And then I will propose to um, set up a research institute for applied research 
in free and open source software which could be used as a focal point, as a starting point, as a center of excellence, a center of know-how, uh, which uh, then could promote the use of open source software, uh, let's say, in Oman or on a national level. So, at first, uh, let's ask the question, why do we have all the buzz about FOSS at present? Yeah, well, I think that's quite understandable. Um, open source software has a history of more than 30 years now, uh, starting 1983 with the activities of Richard Stallman, uh, who is well known in Oman as well. Uh, then we have the proven stability of the open source systems. And of course, we have to take into consideration that open source systems are the only way to, uh, to uh, ensure IT security and data privacy. So from my point of view, for sure, governments are forced to move to open source systems. You, uh, everyone here, I'm sure, has heard about all these spy scandals, usually originating uh, either in China or in North Korea uh, or in the United States. So uh, it's, uh, for me, it's really a funny idea that governments are paying money uh, buying proprietary software and at the same time really pay money for uh, buying for all the viruses and backdoors secret services have inserted into this proprietary software. Uh, you, um, uh, you, uh, the governments really are paying money uh, to, uh, to open up their environments to uh, spies. That is really a funny idea. So, and the only way out of this problem is to use free and open source software because it's simply not possible if, you are, if the source code is available that any secret service is able to, inserting, to, to insert uh, spy code and backdoors into the software. So then we have, uh, as an additional aspect, we have a large number of reports about uh, huge savings with regard to the utilization of uh, free and open source software. Um, then we have the huge migration projects in China and in Russia about, I think it must be about five years ago, the Russian president, um, Mr. Putin, announced that uh, until uh, 2015, which is now, uh, they want to convert the whole government sector and all the schools in Russia to open source systems. Uh, probably he was annoyed uh, to buy software from other countries and then uh, buy or pay money for the spy software, which is then installed on the computers in Russia. In China, we have the same uh, situation. Uh, China announced that they will, uh, will uh, migrate all the government systems until 2020, and uh, that's really a pretty large project. I think they are talking about uh, 290 million computers they want to convert to open source software. And they are talking about de-windowsification de uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in this process. So they are really huge, huge uh, problem, uh, huge, huge uh, projects to convert uh, large infrastructures uh, to open source systems. And uh, if you see that uh, already in 2001, obviously the U US White House became concerned about the, uh, the secret services in the United States as well. And so they tried or they converted their, uh, their, uh, uh, their uh, websites to uh, the Linux operating system, the Apache server, and to Drupal content management system. So a lot of very interesting things uh, are going on. And for me, for sure, it's not the question uh, whether to convert, uh, especially on a national level, whether to convert uh, the existing systems to open source, but just the question when. And of course, uh, if you uh, start uh, early, uh, then you will be able to 
uh, to harvest a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of benefits from utilizing open source systems. Uh, at the same time, uh, I need to point out that uh, open source software is not the so-called silver bullet of information technology. Um, it's open source software just provides an important building block uh, on the, in the software layer of information systems. Um, and at the same time, we need to point out that we uh, just cannot stick only to the information systems layer. Down here, you see that FOSS is on the technical infrastructure layer in businesses and government information systems. Um, and uh, this area usually is managed by, uh, by information technology managers, uh, as we call it, uh, uh, corporate uh, information technology officers. Um, but uh, if we want really to make use or to utilize software, it's just not, uh, we just uh, cannot stick to technical aspects. Uh, we, we need to introduce information systems management. Uh, information systems management is a function which is working on the top uh, level of a company and is responsible for the, all the information systems, not just for the technical aspects. And in that area, uh, frequently there are some deficiencies. People are introducing, let's say, uh, IT directors at ministries and other public organizations, but uh, they simply forget about the upper level management issues. People uh, who are filling these uh, IT, IT directors positions usually have degrees in computer science and are technical specialists, which is very important and very helpful. But they, do, uh, they know little about uh, the uh, management issues and let's say uh, fitting together uh, the IT strategies uh, with the overall government and business strategies. These things cannot be done by technical people. So uh, we for sure, uh, if we have a large information systems and in some organizations, uh, we should say, well, we have uh, information factories. For example, if you have a government office, uh, if you have a banking business, uh, there's no one running around with a hammer and producing something. Um, they are just dealing with information. So if we have these information factories, uh, we uh, just need uh, upper level managers to take care of information systems, like supply chain management systems, like customer relationship management systems, like enterprise resource planning systems. Uh, all these aspects are extremely important on the business level, and uh, uh, managers who are just educated with regard to technical issues uh, cannot manage these upper level, uh, uh, upper level um, uh, information systems issues. Okay, so just uh, uh, let's mention some advantages of FOSS in, on the technical level. Uh, I think that was discussed uh, yesterday, for example, uh, you have the source code available and it's easy to make uh, customizations and to enhance the source code uh, that is not possible with proprietary systems. With proprietary systems, you are stuck uh, with the functions and uh, the error uh, patches uh, which are coming from the proprietary software vendor. Uh, then we have the advantage that we have uh, less downtime with the free and open source systems. That is proven. Um, there are, uh, I think the uh, Red Hat presentation already talked about that a little bit. Uh, free and open, so uh, open source software is a very, very stable software, especially if you are talking about the open source operating systems. Then if you are using open source systems, you have the issue of better uh, interoperability because open source systems uh, usually or in, in nearly all cases stick to international standards. They do not force you to, ad to adapt 
proprietary standards, let's say for your documents or for, for other data resources. Then, as I already mentioned, you don't have any built-in backdoors and uh, Trojan horses. If you buy, and especially in government, uh, if you buy a proprietary software, you can be sure that foreign, uh, foreign secret services have inserted their code into this proprietary software. And unfortunately, you cannot check uh, whether it's in there. But you should be aware that in some countries, by law, proprietary software vendors are forced uh, to insert this spy code into the proprietary software. So I really cannot understand uh, why governments are not urgently uh, trying very hard to get away from this proprietary software. I think it's very important on the government level. Then you have the technical advantage that you, uh, with regard to open source software, uh, you do not have these vendor lock-in strategies. Uh, vendors in the IT business uh, always try uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to force you to use proprietary formats uh, with regard to data and so on, so that you cannot move away easily uh, from this software vendor. Uh, it will uh, cost you a lot if you convert to other systems. So with regard to open source system, systems, uh, vendor lock-in strategies uh, simply are not possible and do not exist. And discontinu discontinu discontinuation of software is another aspect. It, it simply doesn't exist in the open source software world. You know, there are, there are, uh, there are businesses um, uh, somewhere in the world uh, which uh, force you to go from XP to 7, uh, and then they claim, well, uh, you better go to 8.1. And in China, it was even claimed you need to go to 9.0, which doesn't exist. But now there's a discussion that you for sure will need to move uh, to 10.1. And uh, of course, unfortunately, you have some money. Uh, you have, have, to, have to pay some money in between. Uh, these things will not happen to you if you have open source software. You can rely on the uh, global community and they will take care of software. And as we have heard, even if some important players in specific fields uh, drop out of this software community, there are sufficient other people available uh, who are ready to continue to provide maintenance for the software. So what about after the, technical, after the technical aspects and benefits, let's talk about the benefits from a national perspective. And there are quite a lot. We have strategic benefits, uh, we have social benefits, and we have economic benefits. Uh, just let's uh, talk about the strategic benefits. Um, So the, uh, one of the important strategic benefits from my point of view is the possibility that you are able to set up uh, local, uh, uh, local development companies. Because, um, for example, if you would like to make use of open source software in Oman, uh, then it would be possible that you uh, or businesses in Oman uh, simply take the open source code and uh, try to enhance it and to, to change it uh, to the needs uh, here in Oman. So it could be using open source software, especially in governments, uh, it could be a starting point for a little local software industry. That is one of the really strategic advantages of open source systems. Uh, then you have the issue of reduced imports. Of course, if you buy uh, software, uh, usually the software will not come from Oman, but from a foreign country. And so you, are simply, you simply have to pay uh, uh, the hard-earned uh, Omani reals uh, to uh, other com companies in foreign countries. And if you are using open source systems, 
it automatically will reduce the imports because uh, the open source software is for free. And if you build up facilities to take care of maintenance and to provide uh, services directly in Oman, that could be an, uh, an Oman or the starting point for an Oman software industry. Then we already talked about the uh, uh, national security. Of course, uh, from my point of view, it's absolutely man mandatory uh, that governments are using open source software. I wonder whether there's any government in the world uh, who, uh, who readily or which readily accepts that uh, spy services from other countries uh, invade its computers. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, localization is e easy and uh, you know in some countries I think it's not relevant with regard to Oman but in some countries you have severe uh, copyright violations and if you are using uh, open source systems and promote open source systems um, in your country it's uh, similar uh, uh, or there, there will not be any problems about copyright violations. So what about the economic advantages? Um, there are a lot of reports that you can have huge cost savings. We will talk about that in a minute. Uh, total cost of ownership will be reduced drastically, at least that is claimed by a number of companies. Uh, from a technical point, you will be able to enhance the security and the uptime of systems will be better. Uh, you will have, uh, we will be able to achieve vendor independence and uh, in that way you will be able to increase competition. For example, you just can try it out, uh, just claim that uh, the, whole uh, the whole Oman government will switch to open source uh, systems and then you negotiate uh, with the vendor of proprietary software. Uh, they will be ready to reduce the price drastically. I think that's, uh, at least that's uh, the uh, thing I would expect. So um, using, uh, using uh, open source software is uh, definitely increasing competition. If you are discussing social benefits, well, we should uh, talk about inclusion. Open software does not require any investment of private money into buying a new copy of this and that. Uh, and, and that. Uh, you just can download software and use it. So no one, uh, regardless uh, uh, how poor he or she is, is excluded from using all the wells of the uh, open source software. That is a huge advantage and uh, people really can participate or can even participate in this global, uh, global uh, open source communities. So we have a technology which is really inclu inclusive and it's very easy to learn about open source systems because you have access to all the learning materials uh, which is available online. You don't need to attend uh, expensive courses offered by software vendors. It's just a lot of learning materials available so everyone can participate, uh, everyone can use software. There are no restrictions with regard to paying some money to this company or to that company. Okay, let's uh, have a short look at the savings. Uh, the savings are hotly debated, but um, uh, well, I think you cannot easily reject that uh, significant saving, savings obviously exist. Uh, the government of Sweden is reported to save one billion US dollars per year by using open source systems. Uh, the government of Denmark is said to save uh, between 480 million and 730 million per year. Intel Corporation was reporting savings of about 200 million by converting the systems to uh, open source. City of Munich, a well-known project in Germany, is claiming that they were uh, saving uh, 13 million US dollars 
by converting from proprietary software to the open source software. Then Amazon com company is reported to uh, cut uh, the technology expenses by 25%. Merrill Lynch, a large banking and investment business, uh, is reporting that they were able to reduce the software, uh, the uh, tech, uh, IT cost dramatically. And uh, there are even some people are claiming that you can save 60 to 80 percent of the total cost of ownership uh, of IT systems if you are using the open source software. So we simply cannot dismiss the, um, uh, the savings which are reported. Savings uh, for sure are an important aspect if you are a business manager. So you simply, uh, from my point of view, uh, the government is forced uh, to deal with the open source software and try to convert the systems to open source uh, because uh, there are all these security issues involved and the private businesses need to convert their systems to open source because they, uh, they uh, might be able to harvest huge amounts of savings. So are there any roadblocks to the success of free and open software? Yes, I think so. Uh, the two major aspects, from my point of view, are a lack of professional information systems management. People in businesses are very much concerned about management of technical resources, but that is not sufficient. You need people, uh, top-level managers, on the, um, on the uh, highest level in the, in the organization, uh, who are responsible for managing information systems, and that is far more complex than just managing uh, te the technology level. For example, if you really want to utilize uh, computer-supported information systems and open source software, you need to think about um, management of software development, uh, you need to think about uh, developing business processes. Uh, you need to think about aligning IT strategy and business strategy. All these things cannot be done by technical level. You need uh, managers on the upper uh, business level uh, to make decisions in these strategic areas. Then we need um, to introduce free and open source software to um, to, uh, on a national level, for sure, you need the appropriate government policies in place. Um, where do I have my notes? Uh, yeah, it's here. Uh, so, um, if uh, with regard to government policies, uh, I think an important aspect is that um, education in secondary schools is based on uh, FOSS and not on proprietary software. Uh, I think it's a little bit funny uh, that you are introducing proprietary software and simply are creating or educating uh, the future consumers of proprietary software. Does it make sense? From my point of view, it doesn't. So uh, if you start early on in, on the high school level, it will be very beneficial to use free and open source software in that area because then people are really familiar with these systems and later on are not asking for buying uh, proprietary software and using proprietary software. Then, for sure, you need to support the universities that they can offer, especially in the area of computer science, they can offer uh, courses on free and open source software. You need to uh, take care that you have facility, fa facilities for the professional certification of open source uh, specialists, and uh, all these things have to be done on a national level. And then it's very important that the government decides on a strategy to introduce open source systems 
in uh, ministries and in the government area. Because the government really has a chance to create demand for services, uh, for, for uh, services which are related uh, to open source systems. We have, uh, I feel we have such a chicken and egg problem and uh, because the service providers are always complaining, yeah, you know, uh, we uh, uh, do not want to provide services for open source systems uh, because there is not such a big demand. And the businesses are complaining and the government agencies are complaining. Uh, they say, well, you know, we cannot introduce open source systems because we do not have reliable professional services available. And so it's definitely such a chicken and egg dilemma. And uh, uh, if, a, if uh, the government makes a firm decision to switch to open source systems, then uh, there will be uh, private businesses uh, which offer uh, professional services in that area and uh, can uh, provide these services to the government area in a first step. And then if there are reliable professional services, then uh, the uh, business community uh, probably will think about introducing open source systems uh, carefully as well. So that's uh, with regard to government policies. Uh, policies must be in place. That's a, a very important starting point from my point of view. Uh, then we have the problem that in many organizations and in government offices, you just are managing information systems uh, on a technical level. So you have a sort of uh, corporate uh, technical information systems uh, or uh, technical uh, officer, but you do not have uh, this uh, high-level person who takes care of the overall strategic alignment of information systems um, with the needs of a business or with the needs of the government. And um, if uh, that is not the case, I do not know the situation in Oman, but if you do not have information systems management people, then you need to educate them. You need to uh, you need to introduce management information systems programs at universities to educate the people who later on are able to fill the jobs at in, as information managers in businesses and in gov government offices. So um, just uh, give me five additional minutes. Uh, what I'm proposing is um, that a good starting point would be a center of excellence, which is uh, attached uh, to a university. And uh, such a center of excellence could uh, definitely uh, provide a starting point for driving uh, the policies and driving uh, the uh, knowledge about uh, open source systems uh, in, uh, in Oman. And they could uh, take care of internal capacity building. That means they would uh, educate a number of local specialists, um, which then could be used to, to enhance the external uh, capacities. So these, uh, these uh, people, these highly qualified people at the university institute at the center of excellence, then could be used to educate other people in businesses, and of course, this institute uh, should be ready to support um, the, uh, the uh, software vendors uh, in Oman and uh, other people in Oman uh, which uh, would like to set up businesses in that area uh, to set up these businesses. And for sure, this such an institute uh, should not compete with the private industry. That would not be a good idea. Uh, and uh, then, in addition to building internal capacity and external capacity, uh, such an institute at a university would be able to provide uh, consulting services on a very high level to government offices and to private businesses and could support uh, in the same, uh, uh, could be a, uh, uh, an additional job to support the uh, the uh, Oman 
the Oman uh, uh, groups uh, which are involved in setting up or in supporting open source systems. So that would be a general idea about the um, setting up such, a, uh, such an institute. Uh, so we already explained this. We discussed a little bit about internal capacity building, external capacity building, and providing professional support to government and public offices. Conclusion recommendations. Uh, as I already learned, uh, some things are already done here in Oman. Um, but I wonder whether you really have a well defined policy for the public sector. I think there's still some work to do. Uh, awareness of I information systems managers in private businesses and in, in the government area is important. Um, probably you should have a management information systems in uh, management information systems programs at universities and higher education according to ACM standards. Um, the the uh, computer science education has to be switched towards uh, open source systems. Uh, you need to support the education in high school. You need um, uh, vocational training. And of course, it would be very helpful if you have such an open source institute, and this institute could, uh, uh, could work on pilot projects in specific areas, which are of, of special importance uh, for Oman. And um, such pilot projects then could be later on rolled out on a larger scale uh, throughout uh, the country. And of course, uh, all these activities could be supported very well from such a FOSS center of excellence, uh, which has a focus on applied research. Okay, thank you for, that, for your attention. Thank you very much.